Hi, I'm Rose Seaman of the Enviro Pet Waste Network, and welcome to the Animal Innovation Show. We're at 501c3 nonprofit. We're only a little over a year old, and our mission is to make the planet, um, you know, make a kinder planet for people and pets by repurposing the pet waste and there's a whole lot of it it's like you know eight to twelve percent of residential waste so that's kind of our little niche for um you know for the climate change project and um that's what we'll be working on from here on i love this rose i mean it's it's something that we don't think about all the time but i mean there's something like 80 million households have at least one dog mm -hmm. and what happens to all that dog waste, right? It's got to go somewhere. And when we're at dog parks or when we're taking them for walks, all those other things, I mean, this is something you don't think about, but when you start considering, you know, this isn't just, you know, it all ends up in landfills, right? It's not just going away. So it's under the radar. Nobody thinks about it. It's right under your nose and you sure don't want to smell it. So nobody wants to think about it, but it's a fairly serious problem. So take us back to the point when, you know, you decided to start the environmental pet waste network. I mean, what was going through your mind? It sounds like you were inspired by your grandfather and just reusing and composting and sustainable. But what went through your mind to want to start this? Well, when I was I'm retired now, when I was working, I was having lunch in a park and I was reading a book and it was this book, which is Natural Capitalism. And as I was reading this book and eating my lunch, I kept looking up and I kept seeing people in the park who were picking up after their dogs. And it was like one person after another. And I was reading this book about how everything can be reused. And I saw people throwing it in, you know, picking it up in plastic, throwing it in trash cans. And I thought there's an awful lot of this going somewhere. So I started to do a little bit of research and I found out that, um, there was one study, one FDA study that was done in Anchorage, Alaska by the USDA, and it was done at an Alaska sled dog. So I kept kind of wow. digging and digging and thinking, how much is there of this? And then I found out that there were like tons and tons. If you look at how many households, how many dogs, that there are just tons of it going into landfills. Mm -hmm. And when you go to a park or a dog park, when you go to throw it in the trash or in a dumpster, it's like almost all dog waste just right on that one place. I found a um, shelter that had dogs and I said, hey, give me your dog poop. <laughs> and they said, who are you? <laughs> what are you doing? And they picked it up with a scoop. They didn't have any plastic in it. So it was just nice dog poop. So I said, OK, I said, put it in a compostable bag for me and leave it by the dumpster. And they did. And I rented a pickup truck. I went to get it. And um, the composter was not far from the shelter. So I took all this dog poop. I gave it to him and said, okay, see if you can make this into something that's safe and tests okay. So I took it to him. He used a front loader. He put in wood chips. He's a composter. He knows how to put in enzymes and things okay. that will compost it well. And he composted it. It turned out nice. It didn't smell bad. We had it tested. And it tested okay. So then I, I took it, the finished compost, and I actually tried to um, start spider plants in it and start petunia seeds in it. And this dog waste had plants growing like crazy. And I thought, wow, this is really something. So I didn't want to invest anything. In fact, I did all this and I went to garden centers and explained the whole thing to them. And they tried to sell it. It was called Dog on Good Compost. And um, th there was this ick factor, like, oh, ick. And the only people who would buy it, but for the most part, it didn't sell because it had this dog thing attached to it. Mm -hmm. And I had partnered with a pet scooper who would go and collect it there and pick it up and bring it up to us. And the composter thought this was pretty cool. He's a young guy. And he actually put together and customized this 45 foot in vessel. And what's mm. happening is the guy who picks all this up, we talk these people into using compostable bags, dumps it into 
the uh, big in vessel and it turns around and it makes this really nice compost. Right. However, there's no place to take the very nice compost. So Nobody it's being it. used on site. Yeah. So it works until the whole end of getting it out to be used. So it's kind of a strange situation. So this was kind of like a closed loop thing. It wasn't going anywhere. So I met up with a woman in Australia named Ruth Miller, who had been doing dog waste composting at a dog park in Port Elliot in Southern Australia. And the two of us were enthusiastic about this. So we're starting a nonprofit with a bunch of other people. And that's where Enviro Pet Waste Network came from. I mean, these ideas always start somewhere. So now, now you form this 501c3 and is the goal primarily education to get the, the public to take action? The goal is education and um, helping people who advocate for this. I mean, to your point, it's sustainable. You're you're reusing this. I mean, you're providing an awesome version of compost. Like you said, if you find the right people that know how to purpose it, it's not like it, it stinks like dog poo. Yeah, not if it's finished, no. And in Toronto, they take a certain amount of their um, organic waste and they throw it into a biodigester. And yeah. they include dog waste. And, you know, they, they biodigest it, then it comes out and they use it as a starter for their composting. There's mm. lots of lots of different ways to do this. Yeah. So what's the vision then for e EPWN? I mean, it sounds like you guys are just getting started. You've obviously got the experience. Are you trying to aggregate the resources, explain to people what their options are? You know, what what's the vision? Well, we're trying to explain to people that other people do it. And that's what our webinars are all about. And we're trying to explain to them that there are smaller experiments here in vermicompost and in biodigestion. There are small things. One of, one of them is, is a guy in Moscow, Russia, is doing some um, ex an experiment on it. But we're throwing that much dog waste in the landfill. So Yeah, I was going to say, if people want to learn more, if they want to get started, tell them your website. And yeah, epwn.org. And our email address is contact at epwn.org. Well, Rose, thank you so much for coming on. And, you know, as I wrap up the show, I always just love to remind people it starts with an idea. And and Rose is a great example of somebody. It's not like she's been doing this her entire life, but she realized that this is something that needs to be done. And she took the initiative and just started. So maybe you're watching, listening, and you've got a great idea for a product, a service, or or just an idea. If it helps animals or the people that love them, we want to know about it. So please just open your browser, go to innovations.show. We'd love to have you on the show like we did with Rose here to talk about your innovative idea. And please, if you can, sign up at dubert.com where you can join the tens of thousands of Duberteers that are working tirelessly to save the dogs and cats and rescues and shelters across the country. You can sign up at free uh, for free at dubert.com. It's free to get going. Rose, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for telling us what you're doing and really wishing you luck to see how EPWN can expand and, and educate everybody on this problem. Thanks for having me, Chris.